everyone. My name is Julie Bryce. I was asked to give a short video about uh, my ISSA graduate student paper award. Um, so here I go. Let me just share my screen. Oops, there we go. Okay. So like I said, my name is Julie Bryce. I'm an assistant professor at California State University Fullerton. Um, and my paper was on um, honored in 2021. It was called Bras, Bodies, and Boundaries, Reconceptualizing Women's Moving Bodies. And basically, I was using new materialist theory and specifically agential realism um, to look at the connection between women and their sports bras. And I used that to rethink bodily boundaries. So I'll go through the paper really briefly, kind of and then talk about what I'm doing now and as well as the future of uh, the theory that I work with and kind of how it's being used. Um, so the first thing we need to know, though, is really briefly what is new materialisms and what is agential realism. And new materialist theory um, really began uh, 20, 30 years ago based upon this critique of this over-reliance on the discursive, this idea that um, particularly in the social sciences, we are so much emphasizing language and uh, human experience and, the di and discourses. And what that did is it tended to ignore the materiality of our existence. And so with new materialisms, there's a really big focus on taking that discourse, but seeing how materials around us, particularly non-human materials, interact. And so what you're with a lot of new materialist theories is focusing on how humans and non-humans actually come together to produce worldly phenomena, that we can't rely on language or just human experience alone. We need to look at how, how humans, non-humans, organic, non-organic, all interact with each other. And in particular, um, it differs from previous kind of materialist theories because with new materialisms, the non-human is really seen as this lively active agent. So it's not just a passive receptacle of human meaning. It's not just there, but it's actually present um, in a very lively, vibrant way. And it's an active agent. Um, and there's a lot of different theorists working within this space. There's Luz Guattari, there's Barad, there's um, Bredotti, uh, Jane Bennett. There's a whole bunch. Um, I used Barad, Karen Barad's theory of agential realism for my research um, within this particular paper. And so I was using this idea of thinking about how humans and non-humans interact and non-human matters lively to think about women's relationships with their sports bra in particular. And so I interviewed and did focus groups and some arts-based methods with women um, and kind of led to this idea of, well, where does the body begin and end? If we think about the body as a phenomenon, if we think about the body as human and non-human, where does it begin and end? And I focused on three ways we can use the sports bra to really think about where are these bodily boundaries. And the first was I looked at these, what is called interactions um, between fabric, bacteria, sweat, deodorant on a woman's body. So each woman, as she's exercising, um, is going to sweat, and that sweat is very unique to each person depending upon what they're doing, their body size, their genetics, their hormones, everything going on like that. Where they sweat is really dependent upon their own kind of unique body. Um, and it was looking at when the woman begins to sweat, how that sweat then interacts with the sports bra, right? It becomes part of the sports bra. It has a pattern of that sweat um, in the fabric itself. And each person also has their own bacteria. And that bacteria gets transferred onto the sports bra that interacts with the sweat to create new bacteria. A lot of women also wear deodorant and might have perfume. That gets put in the sports bra. And so now the sports bra has all these kind of deodorant sweat bacteria of the woman. And so when she takes it off, that sweat deodorant bacteria all goes with that sports bra and is imprinted into that sports bra in a very unique way. And so it's it's still part of that woman, but maybe it's not. And so where are these bodily boundaries and how can we think about that? The other way I was kind of using this theory to think about bodily boundaries was looking at the entanglement of gravity, tissue, force, and fabric. And so when a woman exercises, um, her there's so many different factors on how her body moves, right? We have gravity pulling, we have tissue counteracting that forces. Um, when a woman's running, the arm swing is going to actually move the breast tissue. Breast tissue itself moves more of a figure eight motion. And when a person wears a sports bra, that sports bra counteracts some of those pulls. And so movement of the body is not just the flesh of the body, but it's actually all these gravitational forces and the sports bra itself interacting to create the moving body. So we think about bodies and moving bodies. Is it just the fleshy movie body, but is it also the clothes that we're wearing that interact and affect that movement pattern? So where again are these bodily boundaries? The final kind of um, 
aspect I was looking at in this paper was looking at memories and feelings become entangled with clothing and part of the kind of clothing women wear. Um, so I had one participant, this is a little bit less of a sports bra, more of active wear, but a woman talked about how she wore leggings during her pregnancies and how the clothing actually stretched as she got bigger. She should throw away those clothes, but she can't because her pregnancy is actually embodied within that fabric. So this whole paper uh, was really just looking at how can we use new materialisms to question and, and just kind of diversify how do we understand movement? How do we understand moving bodies in particular? And, and how does clothing play a role in that? And I'm really excited because this paper is actually just came out um, in Leisure Sciences. So if you want to read a little bit more about this, I kind of suggest turning you towards there. And so I said, this was my ISSA paper from a couple of years ago, and I'm still working with this new materialist theory um, in different ways. So I'm working with it with regards to methods. I'm involved in a project that's using objects within interviews and how we can use objects um, or how we can do methods that kind of speak to that liveliness and the activeness of objects and playing with different methods of how do we actually include non-humans into our research process. Um, so I just published a paper with my colleagues out there and so still working on, on different methods that we can use with this new ontological approach. Um, as I mentioned, this paper just came out and I'm really still playing with these theories and how we can use theories to reimagine concepts that's often taken for granted in kinesiology. And then application. Um, so actually taking these theories and putting them to work in case studies. So I did um, a project around the Tokyo 2020 Olympics using Jane Bennett's theory of uh, uh, Jane Bennett's theory of thing power to think about how objects at the Olympics ignite conversations around race and gender and sexuality. So I'm still playing with this. I'm using different theories um, within new materialist theory. So as I mentioned, Jane Bennett, I'm currently working with actor network theory and affect. So still kind of interested in this. And um, also, I think new materialisms itself is really growing within kinesiology and leisure sciences and sport and exercise research. And so what I see happening within new materials in the field more broadly is we're seeing a lot of people still play with really creative methods. You know, again, how do we get at the vitality of the non-human and how do we look at how humans and non-humans interact in different ways? So we're seeing a lot of arts-based methods, which is really cool coming out, walking methods, trying to get the body involved itself. Um, we're seeing that new materialism is actually being more popular in our associated fields. Uh, so SCP, sports site, coaching, sport management, health and wellness are all kind of getting on um, or interested in new materialisms and using them in their field, which actually I think leads to another possibility as we move forward with new materialisms is this potential for more interdisciplinary and collaborative work with people kind of maybe outside of our own silo. Um, because now that we kind of have a universal new materialist language, maybe it might bridge the gap and allow us to work together a little bit more particularly also within kinesiology itself and kind of working with exercise physiologists and biomechanists. And then finally, I think the next kind of area we're seeing is now that we've at least had some methods that we're using, how do we actually represent this information that we're finding besides just writing it all down? So we've seen some pretty cool um, art space met, uh, art space representations as here. There's been um, kind of some museums that have incorporated artwork that um, also incorporate new materialist ideas and they've set up um, and scholars have set up exhibits that people can walk through to understand some of the data. So I'm seeing some really interesting things in the field um, and how new materials continue to advance uh, research within sport, exercise, and health. So I just want to say thank you so much for listening. Like That is my contact. Please reach out. I'm also a co-director of the Center for Sociocultural Sport and Olympic Research. Every year we have a conference down in Southern California, so we'd love to have you. We also publish the Journal of Olympic Studies. So if you're doing research in that area, please check us out. And thank you so much for listening.